Christopher Columbus, Thomas Edison, the Wright brothers, we read about them in the history books and we studied their accomplishments. Why? Because they all did something monumental that nobody had ever done before. And okay, well, technically that's not really the reason why, but the point is, is get ready to add this one to the books because mark my words, our kids are gonna read about this. All right, gentlemen. How you feeling, Christian? You feeling like uh, we're up for the challenge? I feel like we've just arrived at the first target of the day. You're not wrong. There we go, there's proof. First target of the day and it's all covered by trees. Brother? Die, dude, I look so bad. All right, target one, stop one. Have we ever looked better? Yeah. It is so quiet right now. All the way back in 2017, when I was just a grasshopper's knee, I decided to post a video on my channel of me going on a toy hunt vlog. For those who don't know, a toy hunt is probably the two dumbest words ever put together, but it's also when you go to some kind of store and search for one or multiple specific figures. All right, location one, we got Trash Master, which is not bad, actually. I didn't expect to find anybody. Get in the frame, Chris. what are you doing? Whether you collect Bakugans or Marvel Legends figures or Legos, or in my case, Transformers. We're not young spring chickens anymore, man. I know, we'll actually go to jail. The thing is, is after seven episodes over the course of about five months, I decided to officially retire this series on behalf of making more filmic planned content that you see on my channel today. Now, fast forward all the way to May of 2023, not too long ago, when I had a little spark of inspiration that left me wondering, where's the ultimate toy hunt? I don't know, I just couldn't live in a civilization with such a gaping hole at its core. As somebody once technically never said, be the change that you wanna see in the world. I knew I had to be that change. I spent the next six months researching, charting, saving, and preparing for the craziest accomplishment that anyone had ever attempted in the history of humanity. There, I said it. Yeah, we're rolling with this. Since Toys R Us shut down in 2018, the next most widely accessible toy store for collectors in the US has been Target. I researched all 50 states to find the one that had the most amount of Target stores in it while also also being like the one that was physically possible to accomplish within a limited amount of time. See, Amelia Earhart didn't take five years in her sweet time to fly across the Atlantic. So like a true pioneer, I set out to complete this major accomplishment in four days. I don't know, it just felt right. Also technically four and a half. We'll get there. After all this research, the perfect candidate was found right in my good old home state of Florida. Land of the oranges and just so many old grumpy retired people. I'm just being serious, there's so many of them. This is when I petitioned the help of my great friend Christian to map out all the details of each of the target locations across Florida, including address, city location, and most importantly, the most effective route to string our way between each of the 127 stores. Fast forward to the end of 2023, where you'll find me flying across this great country in order to meet up with Christian and begin just the dumbest journey of my life. Just incredibly stupid. First one down, 126 to go. Cool. All right. Nice. We can go. I love that. You are the. You got the pedal. Come here. We definitely didn't start off on the right foot, considering that we both managed to only get in an hour and a half of sleep, an hour and a half the night before. How do I look? <laughs> Lovely. It took us an unbelievable half an hour to get in and out of our first target on the route. We even drove there and were waiting outside before it opened at 8 a.m. just to maximize time, since each target location is only open from 8 a.m. till 10 p.m., leaving only 14 open hours for us to knock out just uh, such an unholy amount of stores. This one looks pretty rare. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah. For sure. In order to make this possible, the schedule only allowed for a strict 30 minute lunch break during each day. Seven, four. Uh, okay, okay, okay. That was the dream at least. Going out to accomplish a goal as ridiculous as this, we needed a few rules to keep us in check and to maximize our suffering as much as possible. Uh, that's not what I wrote down here, but in hindsight, that's really all that it did. So rule number one, in order to consider a target location visited and accounted for, I have to step foot in the transformer section of the toy aisle, most often located at the very back of the store. Rule number two, Christian has to do this with me. 
Number three, I am not allowed to purchase more than one figure on my checklist per location. Number four, if I find some kind of unusual Target exclusive item that I haven't found at any other location, I am required to purchase that as my one item no matter what, which at first kind of seems like a useless and unreasonable rule, but it actually exists because of the most challenging rule, number five. I am not allowed to purchase any less than one figure per location. You may not yet fully understand the true weight of that last rule, but trust me, I did. That's uh, WWE, Never mind. Oh, and the last half rule that I'll label 6.5, if it ever came down to a choice between two figures, Christian's decision ultimately is what flies. I don't know why I made this rule specifically. I shouldn't have, I deeply regret it. some unholy reason, we scheduled the first day to pack in the most amount of locations along the route relative to the other days. I think it was one of the first few Target stores where we noticed that there was a 25% off all toys, including Transformers. So I downloaded the app in order to get the coupon. This right here is the look of a man who's just come to the breathtaking realization that I was going to unexpectedly get a whopping 25% off of everything I had to buy. Not dozens, hundreds of dollars saved. I gotta get Rhinox, dude, I gotta get Rhinox. I mean, if nothing else, this was proof that we were being watched and taken care of. Come on. All right, so it didn't actually work out in that location, but there was plenty of targets left to try. No big deal. Is this not the excitement I promised you, Christian? See, that's a cute little target. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Christian? Oh, that is the exit. Oh, that's so embarrassing. Hasbro's toy distribution to retail stores has gotten really bad since 2020, so I was kind of nervous about not finding anything new since I put so much planning into this. But thank heavens, I finally did. I found a brand new wave of core class figures, which are these $10 miniature scale figures, and I've specifically collected all these little tiny guys in the same Dinobot team. They all are gonna combine together to be this big hunkin' fella. It's, um, it's a little slug. No, sorry, sludge. It wasn't huge, but it was a start. I do love sludge as a character, and frankly, I was just really excited to finally find something by this location. Or that's what I thought. What? Something over there? On some random end cap, we found this neat little uh, Target exclusive pop figure and t-shirt two pack. This is when I was reminded of rule number four, which at the time I was strongly debating, pretending I never made that, which I could have, it was my rule. What can I say? I'm just that kind of a guy. It, it hurts me to lie, you know? Either way, obviously I'm no corner cutter. I'm a pioneer. As a pioneer, I have to let my convictions be stronger than my desires. So of course I did what any good, honest grown man would do. That sucks, dude. I bought the Transformers themed Funko Pop t-shirt. How does it feel to be a baller, oh, Paper shut up, Christian. Nobody said I had to be happy about it. But at the very least, we did get to use the 25% off discount on it, right? Um, funny story. No. So it turns out that the discount just never worked after the first try, which is great considering that I was promised from multiple workers and the disclaimer that it was not limited to one per customer. It's fine, I'm still recovering. What's he looking at, dude? What happened to his neck? He's got my neck. About midday, we found ourselves in West Palm Beach, which is my home city. Yep, I was born and raised there and moved away to Orlando when I was 14 years old. This humid dumpster armpit holds a very special place in my heart. To the play. But especially the targets were special there because for me growing up, we only went to Target around the holidays to shop for gifts. I never really got to go when I wanted to, but <laughs> sucks being a kid because now I can do whatever I want. West Palm Beach, Target, baby. Country home. Wait, take me road. Let's get out of here. So look at me. Finally, a decade later doing what I want, I finally got to revisit this symbolic temple of freedom as I felt just the rush of nostalgia. I so clearly remember it looked totally different. It was remodeled. It didn't look the same at all, which that makes perfect sense. I don't know why I didn't expect that. It's just stupid. I would have had the full Dinobot set. I would have had the full thing. This is the other guy. It's Christian. Look at that. He stepped on something. What? Your dignity. If you could do me a favor, if you notice me or Christian or me getting a little bit snippy with each other throughout this, no, you didn't. What are you talking about? Mind your business. No, we don't. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was trying to grab your shirt. Oh, I was yeah. trying to grab your shirt. <laughs> After this is when we made our first gas stop. Also, I really had to pee, which I only mentioned because the gas station clearly didn't care. 
Rude. Now with the car full of gas and a liter of piss still inside my bladder, we were fully ready to hit the next location as quickly as possible since we were only falling behind the schedule. Which is why it's pretty awesome when half the targets that we went to, there was somebody just specifically blocking only the Transformers aisle, which is a dumb complaint. I know it's a dumb complaint because we're in people's ways just as much as they're in our way. It's, hear me out, for half the targets, the entire aisle would be completely devoid of human life. There would be not a single person there. And then just right at the Transformer spot, the little four foot segment, somebody's just standing there blocking it, looking at something else. So annoying. And it's just like some mom trying to buy a toy with her kid. I mean, grow up, get out of here. You know? Anyways, I finally found my little core class sludge and this time I could actually buy them because there weren't any exclusives stopping me from my unhindered bliss and happy. I'm just kidding. Christian decided I should buy another figure that showed up for some reason. Uh, the more expensive one. The good news is I do have Christian's address here. I'm gonna go ahead and post that in the comments if any of you guys wanna go. There was a lot to unpack over the next few locations, including, but not limited to, toy vandalism. Oh no, we have it, the infamous figure swap. Early signs of hunger. Oh! A lot of what I'll just call inconsequential, but ultimately infuriating tidbits of bad luck. For example, walk into a Target and every single time the toy aisle and the self-checkout is on the opposite side of whichever door we chose to walk into. Is it actually on the far left side? Are the toys on the opposite? Are those really the only open checkouts? Like guessing game of where do they put the toys in this one there's some more self checkouts down there Oh, and finally, spotting a brand new wave of deluxe class figures. I literally didn't see this guy right here. Which, if you didn't know, is the name of what we call a size class in Transformers figures, where they're about four inches tall, cost about $25. And this is a brand new batch of them, or at least it was months ago when we filmed this. Hey, please subscribe and uh, like the video. You're the best. They cover everything with trees in Florida. Oh my goodness. We get uh, strong on this time. This is when we finally got our 30 minute scheduled lunch break, except that we were several locations behind for the day, meaning no lunch. But it's a good thing that the human body doesn't actually need real food to, you know, keep it going or make it less grumpy. Would you use the brakes properly, please? I'm Christian, I like to slam on the brakes. Garrett, would you shut up? Also, I still had to pee really badly. Uh, Coral Springs. Boca Raton. Deerfield Beach. Delray Beach. Gray looking target. <laughs> Why is there no red on this target? True story, I actually thought there was something wrong with my computer when I first imported it and started watching because this target really just looked like a black and white film. So that's fun. No colors anymore. I want them to turn black. All right. Now, if we thought that we were rushing earlier, this was a whole other ball game because the time was crunching and we are now having to deal with the crowds of the after work hours. It took so much more time than I ever could have imagined just waiting in line to get to a checkout or trying to get through large crowds of people respectfully without acting like chronically online vlog bros. God, I hate him so much. Yeah, I feel like everyone around me thinks I'm about to prank him hard or something. <laughs> After a string of targets, we arrived at one of the more interesting locations, which happened to be in a shopping mall. I don't know, this turned out to be way more exciting than it probably should have been, just because of how much I completely underestimated how fatiguing this whole trip would be. Oh, this is in the mall. Yes, a mall. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you the first major symptom of severe repetition fatigue disorder, which is irregular bursts of excitement for incredibly mundane and boring things. That's a whole Starbucks, brother. Dude, they have an entire tech area. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I'm expecting big things from Trans Transformers that I think I passed. Things that, let's just be honest, no human should ever be expressly enthused about. Okay, well, I redact that statement. Look at those slats up there. Do you think the manager would let me live here? To be fair, it wasn't exactly the worst thing to be experiencing considering the circumstances. Oh, and neither was this blissful moment where I finally was reunited in finding my good little buddy, the highly desired core class sludge. There he was, just sitting on the peg. It was one of the highlights of the trip for me. There was finally nothing standing between me and my new best friend. Do you fall for it? Yeah, I bet you did. I did too.
Turns out that the universe was punishing me and just sent me a peg full of exclusive Beast Wars Super 7 figures. If you don't know what those are, consider yourself lucky. It's just a figure, not a transformable figure. I didn't say a poseable figure. Uh, it's You're not missing out on anything. But Jerry, why couldn't you just buy a boat? <laughs> Running out of time, Jared. Fort Lauderdale Target, anyone? Oh, we're on the opposite side. We're gonna find Studio Series Optimus Prime. Oh, what we're gonna find? Pembroke Pines? I hope it's on the other side of the Target. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> uh, no sledge? All right, Hollywood, baby. Is that color faded? You believe? Super targets. Uh, no. A dying breed. It was getting a little late, and we were more than a little bit tired, so needless to say. Is that a UFO? What is it doing there? Why is it patriotic? Okay, never mind. It's just a hotel atrium. Anyways, as I was saying, it was getting a little late, and we had multiple Miami locations to knock out as quickly as possible. And as it got down to the last two stores, we did the math, and realized that finishing the last one before close would come down to, I'm not kidding, the minute. Luckily for us, the traffic was finally chilling out since nobody besides mentally insane people and 46-year-old soccer mom show up to Target past 8 p.m. Surprisingly, I found a killer clearance deal on a Buzzworthy Bumblebee 2 pack. I even checked the package for broken tape to see if it was a returned item, but I couldn't find anything. Back on track, this was the final race to get to the last location. Christian was a safe driver and all, don't get me wrong, but we were hitting the gas. Like, technically illegal, but no cops really gonna take the time to pull you over type speed. Not to mention, I had a really great feeling about finding something truly special at the last location. A buzzworthy Bumblebee Optimus Prime, maybe even a leader class Optimus Primal. I knew that there had to be a reason that the stars aligned to put us in that location last. We made it. It was closed. To be honest with you, we we're both just too tired to even be mad about it. All that truly mattered at this point was one thing, food and going pee. I have not felt hunger this deep, maybe ever. And like a good neighbor, Miller's was there to cure our deepest wounds and light our darkest night. I felt the presence of heavenly angels in my chest as we approached the glowing sign of salvation. This plate of chicken and fries I will never experience starvation this severe again. I thought to myself, naive of what was to come in the future days. But for now, I felt peace. I also dropped into the bathroom to go pee, finally, which is great. The last challenge of the night was a whopping 120 mile drive to our hotel. We finally got to bed by two o'clock and that might have just been the deepest and the quickest nap of my life. Night, Christian. Night. Okay. Wake you up was pretty tough, I'm not gonna lie, but I'd say our spirits were lifted and we were feeling better overall. <laughs> So at least we had a slightly better grip on what the day looked like, what to expect. <laughs> Kept the muffin just chilling in the corner there. Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> and our first stop was good old Naples Target, which is just uh, the most boring Target I've ever seen. So ugly. First of the day. Any luck? Uh, 50% chance. I'll recognize this little fella. This little, <laughs> this kid. Yeah. No sludge though. Thanks a lot, Christian. Speaking of Naples, I think it was around this point that I just started growing numb to all the prices because the fact that I was not in an active pool of tears after paying $65 for a Fatimus Prime robot uh, is kind of a massive red flag. Is it time? I think it's time. All right. Oh, seriously? Gotta do it at some point. Any loved ones, family members ever start doing this? Yeah, get help. Stero target. Can you stop interrupting me? <clears throat> oh my. One of the next targets was a pretty awesome throwback to yesteryear when they would place like the toy aisle directly to the front side of the store. I kind of miss this. Anyone remember that? This is pretty exciting, Christian. Eh? Eh? <laughs> <gasps> Look who it is. Finally, me and my good little buddy Sludge were inseparable and not even Christian could stop me from buying him. The day was still young and just looking so much brighter. And you know what? It wasn't so much the figure, but more of the journey to find him and the friends we made along the way that truly counted. Also, this figure is complete trash. It's really bad. <laughs> Target. You ready for the next Fort Myers? Two of three. After Target. That's its own like little island here. That's kind of crazy. After Target. <laughs> As we got closer to the coastline, I started to realize that I still had this natural impulse to avoid the more expensive Transformers. You know what? Not yet. Maybe I just wanted to live in blissful denial that all those figures wouldn't somehow end up in the back of my car, because that's horrifying. I don't think I have this one. Do you remember this one? Uh... I'd like to pause really quick and just introduce to you the second major symptom of severe repetition fatigue disorder, or served memory loss. Did I get this guy? Not today. I didn't? Are you sure? Did I get this guy? I can't remember. Did I end up getting this? I don't remember. Where you just completely forget what the heck is going on. Oh, I just realized I brought my toothbrush in. Look at that. 
Not new, but something different. Oh, and he's got the new painted face. Look at that. I will say, you learn how to hold your pee pretty well. You somehow have no time for that nonsense. But every once in a while, you gotta do what you gotta do. So, are you kidding me? <sighs> okay. Um, anyways, whatever. They couldn't break our spirits because we finally arrived at the big location 5 -0. This is location number... Number are we on? It's 50. Christian, we talked about this. You gotta get all hyped up for the camera. It's kind of a surreal number to get to. And truth be told, if we didn't have a chart tracking it, I don't think either of us could have told you whether we had gone to 10 or 500 targets, which might help explain the mental state of what happened next. We didn't already go to this location, right? Right? This can't be the same again. The figure placement is identical. I remember seeing that on discount right here. How would that be possible? You'd double check the address. This is 9350 Dynasty. So it's not the same. It's not. We. <laughs> Turns out we were at a different target, which is good. I just think that the trip was getting to us psychologically, which is not good. Either way, the only real way forward was up. Oh, and if you're a particularly observational young bloke, you might have noticed that Christian and I didn't need anything for lunch. At this point, I think we just both kind of accepted that lunch breaks were not in the cards if we wanted a fair shot at finishing the route for that day, which, if I haven't explained, is really important. So basically, in order to accomplish such an impossibly large stretch of distance over the course of the four days that we set, we had to deliberately schedule the longest travel gaps for after hours. You know, Jared, you gotta get it eventually. If we had, say, a 120-mile distance to travel between two target store locations, we scheduled to do it after the targets had closed that way it didn't count against our 14 hour crunch time. I guess we'll just have to get these. No, don't make me take them, please. Does that count as a Transformers item? Yep. Hold it up and smile. Like you mean it. There we go. Meaning that if we missed even one or two locations by the time they close at 10 p.m., we'd have to wait there overnight and go to those two locations in the morning that would push that massive 120 mile drive to the open hours of the day. And now we've missed a dozen targets. It hurts so bad. Oh gosh. So moving into the evenings was not exactly the relaxed time we wanted it to be. Oh, did you want RC or would you like RC? On the other hand, it's an option to get RC. Wait, what about that one? But it wasn't without its highlights, including a really exciting new Transformer find that only took, I don't know, 60 or so stops to find. <gasps> no way, dude. They have something. They have something new. This is the greatest day of my life. There's a different Transformer. Are you crying? I might be crying. Oh, and an absolutely gorgeous sunset that would calm even the most inflicted of souls. And just in time to hit our biggest adversary yet, Tampa. Tampa has uh, just a criminal amount of targets, but it is a big city, so we were bound to find some sort of Studio Series Optimus Primal or maybe even a Target exclusive Prime, right? <laughs> Spoiler alert, no. Statistically, that might seem kind of weird to you guys. I mean, I agree, thinking what's going on, and what is going on? Uh, like seriously, what, what's going on? I don't understand, how, how is this even possible? I could throw a Studio Series wheelie into a crowd of people and apparently have a higher chance of hitting a leader class Optimus Primal than going to every single target available in the state. And I don't even know what that statistic means. And it's fair to say that Hasbro's not gonna fix their distribution issues anytime soon. So I knew that there had to be a better way to do this. Thank heavens I found today's channel sponsor, Bai. Bai is a collector's last hope for getting access to hundreds of Japanese exclusive toys and rare collectibles, including Transformers. It's a Japanese proxy auction site where you can find so many different collectibles that you'd never even dream of finding here. That was a lot of words and most people wouldn't know what they mean. So don't freak out, let me explain. It looks a little daunting at first, but in reality, it is very similar to eBay and other familiar sites where you can place a bid for some incredible items from different sellers. And because the site knows I'm an idiot, it translates everything to US currency or whatever currency you live with. And let me tell you, the prices on some of these these items are just insanely good. This is largely because, if you didn't know, so many things are directly manufactured in Asia, making collectibles like Transformers much cheaper there. Essentially, cutting out the middleman like Target or Walmart often gets you a significantly better price. And that's assuming that Target gets their items that they're supposed to at all. On the Bayou website, you can select a specific Japanese online seller to shop through if you prefer that way, or you can just use the general search bar to look across all the shops and watch the magic happen. Of course, like any auction hosting site, you want to pay special attention to the seller and make sure that everything looks legit, but several of Bayou's shipment plans include their personal inspection of the item before shipping it to you internationally, which is really comforting. The fact that we can buy virtually anything from Japan now is so useful for toy collectors, but especially for us Transformers fans, since the originating brand and co-owner of Transformers is Takara Tomy, a 
Japanese brand. So you'll understand the pain of not getting access to most of their many exclusive items that the rest of the world just doesn't get. Now we can. The best part is I have a 10% off discount just for you guys on your first buy you purchase when you use the link in my description. Again, make sure that you specifically use the link below to get that discount on literally anything across any Japanese online shop in Bai. 10% adds up. We're all broke. Let's be honest. Once again, huge thank you to Bai for sponsoring this video. They have been so patient with me with the many delays that this production has gone through. And heads up, be a little bit careful. It's kind of addicting to use the site once you see the prices. I also want to give just a massive thank you to Binary Coco and Bamboo Labs for quite literally making so much of this video possible. I'm going to post the link to Binary Coco's website below because let's just say that they make some incredible original family games far better than Hasbro could ever dream of. If you want to know how I built and filmed the awesome miniature glowing store models with their help, stick around to the end of the video where I'll talk more about them. At this point though, I really wasn't that occupied with the completely abysmal selection of toys because we were down to crunch time. That little scurry that we did the night before, that was child's play. That was for kids. We were just young spring calves at that point. Now we were full grown bulls. Hmm? That's not it. This is where I need to confess to you guys. As we hurried to the second to last location of the night, we did the math and realized that it would be physically impossible to park the car, run in together, and pull out of the parking lot within the strict two minutes of spare time that we had if we wanted to physically make it to the last target. We can do this, Christian. I believe in us. Not with those numbers. <laughs> so we made a compromise. Christian sped to the front line of the Target store where I was ready to book it as fast as I was capable. <laughs> Blood pumping, armpit sweating, and man boobs bouncing, I practically all forward my way back to the front lines where Christian picked me up and cranked the gas. Nice location. Apple Maps ETA predicted our arrival at exactly 10 p.m. We raced down the highways and side streets. Safely, of course. Kids, don't speed. We finally made it to the curb where all I could do was slide out of the car at full speed and hope for the best. We're good. We're all right. Is this yours? Okay, great. You probably couldn't tell by the heavy breathing and the glossy forehead, but I was filled with pride. We did it. Some might have even called it impossible, but like true pioneers, we spat in the face of impossibility. Dinner? Side note, Steak and Shake is god tier. It's really good. <laughs> By the mercy of heaven, the next morning's first target location wasn't more than 25 miles away, which meant we were able to get to our hotel right by it by a record-breaking 12.30 in the morning. And after talking to our wives and plugging in more than a dozen devices to charge overnight, we basically collapsed into bed by 1.30. It might not have been a full, legitimate night of sleep, but little did we know it would be by far the best we were going to get for the rest of this trip. Fever, dreaming, Day three. Up until I get you to. It gave us the least amount of locations to visit out of the entire trip, but only because the stretches between each location were so long. Ready? Day three. Oh, day three. Our first stop of the day was pretty basic, but I had a pleasant start by finding a brand new studio series figure we hadn't seen once. When you've been to over 70 targets and you see something new, it's shocking. <sighs> Almost as insane as the way Christian likes to eat his breakfast bagels. Open it up, show audiences what you're eating on this bagel. I don't want to violate the bagel on camera. <laughs> Let me see. Nothing! There's nothing in the bagel, you psychopath! You're just raw dogging that sucker! Comment if you've ever had a plain bagel. <laughs> Shut up! I'm not getting gaslit. Not on my watch. So just go down below, comment the most vile thing you could possibly think of for Christian. Let's bully him back to normality. This video is gonna get flagged so hard. <laughs> Does it remind you of anything, Christian? Not that I remember. Good old vlog days when we were young little whippersnappers. Hey, Christian. Yeah? Do you think this is a good idea? One, two, three. Yeah. Woo! So we hit up a few more targets and I started to notice when I couldn't tell if a figure was brand new to the stores or so old that this one location was the last to have it. Our next stop was in Tallahassee, finally making our way to the Panhandle. Our trip to the first Tallahassee location was 122 miles, which even though I was born and raised in Florida, I had never once seen the Panhandle in my life. It was also when I started to notice some very unflorida like scenery popping up. Is that color in the trees? What the heck? This also gave me some real hopes that getting further from home meant we'd be getting different selections of inventory at those target stores. Oh, what are we looking at? I don't know anymore. It's true. Oh my gosh, Christian, there's nothing new. Okay, uh, well, maybe not immediately, but the next location was in central Tallahassee, or the big honcho. Look at her, she's a beast. 
No, wait a minute. It turns out. Is it tiny? It was just a miniature target. It's kind of like those little uh, green shrunk down grocery store Walmarts that live to disappoint everybody besides your parents. It didn't really matter though. We we're just happy to see something new. You don't really care about us. I didn't even know if they were gonna have toys. They sometimes don't. All right, what are the odds they actually even have Transformers here? 50%. This is it, this is the toy aisle. Let's see what we got here. <gasps> we got Trash Master. This is it, this is, this is the Transformers aisle. All right. They have Transformers though. You already have him? Yeah, I already got him. This technically marked the first time that we were able to legally void rule number three, if you recall. After all, we did own everything there. That's funny. Christian's laughing right now. You can't, you can't see him. He literally is choking on his laughter. He does that a lot, actually. <laughs> all right, calm down, Christian. We hit the road for another 100 mile stretch before reaching another coastline, this time in Panama City. Now, I don't like beaches. I know that makes a lot of people mad. I just can't possibly imagine anything worse than combining sand and salt into one singular experience. However, I was really happy to see the beach that day. A little stiff in the legs there. A little stiff legs, Christian. <laughs> yeah, the stanky legs. <laughs> The change in scenery, the beautiful view, the light breeze, oh, and of course, Publix. Publix is a Florida native Southeastern grocery store chain. It's not Target. Oh, gosh. And it's a uh, cult. Seriously, it's literally just a cult. If you think I'm exaggerating, just do a quick social experiment. Walk up to any Floridian and ask them specifically who they'd be willing to sacrifice if you were to give them a Publix chicken tender sub and see what they say. With the spare 10 minutes on the schedule that we most definitely didn't have, we decided to stop into Publix and grab some food after mutually deciding we couldn't physically make it another day past 10 p.m. without any food. Between the next few targets, we were lucky enough to be riding along the coast when the sun was setting. Between this, our semi-full stomachs and a completely out-of-pocket joke that Christian threw at me, we were feeling pretty good. <laughs> I just like, you like dug your face down. I might be into that. Of course. <laughs> the only thing left to do, of course, was a little sweater shopping because for some reason, Florida has a significantly better selection of sweaters and hoodies than Idaho. Just a little known fact there that often keeps me awake at night. Still. This one. You know what else keeps me awake at night? The price I paid for the toy that I unfortunately found at the next stop. This is technically in the Transformers area. Let's see if you're really about it. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that a lot of money to pay for a toy? Yes, absolutely. But was it worth it for the one and only officially licensed Lego Transformer set? No. It's $200. What are we doing? Lego collectors, are, are you okay? Can you afford bread for your family tonight? I'm so sorry. All right, boys. Last location of the night, if you can believe it. Why is bro standing like that? What? <laughs> Why is bro? <laughs> we, got a, we got a new guy on the block. Now, with the last target completed for the day, we managed to somehow finish the route a full 45 minutes early. It almost felt too good to be true, and it was just such an astronomical relief to finally not be pushing everything oh. to the last minute before close. <gasps> it's like hard to breathe after you take a sip. Any messages for Logan Paul in KSI? Uh, just take a chill pill, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we finally had time to unwind at a classy diner, then drive to the closest hotel, and get the long eight-hour slumber that we deserved and so desperately needed before the last day. Just kidding. Oh man, did I trick you? You should, you should really stop falling for that because in actuality, the end of day three contained the single longest drive time between two locations out of the entire trip. Not 120 miles, not 200 miles, 330 miles, which is a full five hour drive, getting us there by four in the morning. So after eating the crunchiest and the stalest Baconator of my life, we pulled up Apple Maps and set our location to Yulee, Florida. Out of the panhandle, across the state, from one coast to the opposite. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. Out of the panhandle, across the state. Hey Christian, why is it saying we're gonna be there at 5 a.m. instead of four? That doesn't really make any sense. I tricked you for the last time, uh, but it turns out we are the ones who fell for this one. This is when we looked it up and realized that when we reached the panhandle earlier that day, we had crossed a time zone, explaining why we had such a suspiciously large amount of time remaining after our last target stop. And by the powers of heaven, neither of us noticed when the clocks all moved back an hour some point throughout the day. The bad news is leaving the panhandle meant that we were now losing that hour, meaning that we were not going to be getting to the hotel by four in the morning, but after five. It became pretty clear to us that by the time we got there, unpacked and got into bed, it wouldn't be any sooner than six in the morning, at which point a hotel's kind of more or less complete waste of money. So with heavy hearts and a resilience in our chest, we did what any brave pioneer would have done. 
we parked at a truck stop at three in the morning and we got the little amount of sleep that we could. I'd say it was a rough start to the day, but it didn't really feel like anything ended in the first place. And I wanted to be as safe as possible, so I took an Adderall and I finished the last half of the drive to Yuli just in time for the first target to open. First stop of the day. You ready, Christian? Yuli. 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 Our first target of the day rewarded our long journey with a new Cyberverse Shockwave. So you guys can't get it apparently because it had to be recalled? Uh, that we couldn't buy. We slowly started making our way back home along the route and yes, I'm wearing my sweater. It wasn't cold. It was still very Florida. You know what? I feel like we've gotten to know each other pretty well over the course of this video. I'd say we're pretty good friends, so may as well be transparent. I just got tired of looking fat throughout the entire freaking vlog despite having lost like 60 pounds over the last year. Also, I kind of rock a sweater, you know? What? We stopped by another target and then filled up on gas so I could clean up the car windows. This is when we faced off against the ultimate enemy of the trip, Jacksonville, and sleep deprivation. If I was complaining that there was a lot of targets in Tampa, forgive my naivety, and because I do care about your mental health and value your time, my pain and suffering is now gonna become your groovy little montage of satisfying checkout scans and receipt grabs. If you appreciate just my charitable and great heart, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It's free, unlike this trip. We may not have been in the best mental condition by now, but it was a silver lining getting to drive along a beach for our next few stops. What the heck? As a matter of fact, there's literally a target just about as close I'd imagine as legally possible to sitting on the beach, which I'd say is the perfect place to celebrate a big whopping milestone. No, this is a special target to me, Christian. Why? This is number 100, baby. Uh, I think this is the point at which we were just officially numb to the numbers. Besides, I was getting crippling arthritis. Christian was actively losing his mind. Goo goo, gotcha. <laughs> and I started growing a massive cold sore overnight. I guess these are all apparent symptoms of surf. Morale wasn't exactly at its all time high. So real talk for just a second. We're gonna finish because we've made it this far. But yeah, this isn't fun right now. Like just being straight, like almost mentally unhealthy. Bless Christian's heart, he's been a freaking trooper. I think that's what gets really tough about it along the way. It feels like we can bail on it. It's not life changing, it's not crucial. And your brain is just wondering how you can make it stop. It's kind of a cool little target thing down there. What do you call it? A pillar. What are you laughing at? It's called a pillar. Are we convincing ourselves that we target? That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> like obviously we made it past the whole like, oh, this is fun until like the, oh, this is like so crazy and frustrating. It's, it's funny. And it's actually just kind of frustrating now. And it's tough because it's like, yeah, you signed up for it. And I did. Absolutely. And so I'm not sitting here saying like, oh, I have a hard life, but I grossly underestimated just how taxing this would be. Ready? What the? I've never seen this. I'm getting the tinklies. <laughs> Something new, Christian. How about him, huh? Pretty good. I never thought that I'd truly say this, but by far the biggest relief and comfort I felt that day was finally making our way into Orlando where everything felt familiar and the air just smelled a little more like home. I knew deep down in my heart that this was truly closer to home once I set eyes upon the endless sea of vandalized packages, the headed characters, and figure swapped toys. It's enough to make my cold heart warm. Wait a minute, we've missed one. We gotta do it, Christian. I think RC finally deserves some love. Then let's give it to her. <laughs> we continued from store to store in Orlando on what you could just only be called autopilot. And I really quickly want to point something out. You might have caught on to this by now. How are there this many toys in the little tiny transformer section of Target? Don't get me wrong. There's probably a good amount of toys in that aisle. Probably a little more than we expected, but dozens? Hundreds? You gotta get one of them. They're just so... Ugh, you can't pose them. You know what you can do with them? Nothing. Where are all these figures coming from? Do you happen to know how many Smash Changer Scourges I saw stacked up over the course of those 100 locations that nobody wants? Even the toddlers won't buy. Toddlers don't have to, the deep pockets, what are you doing? You couldn't, you can't imagine. They're literally everywhere. They're all stacked to like the very front. They take up so much space. So all I'm saying is by this point, the autopilot inside my mind for just picking up random toys from each store had grown so deep, it was embedded into my very core. Target was becoming my new home. Who am I without Target? And ladies and gentlemen, this is where I'd like to introduce to you the penultimate major symptom of surf, acceptance.
The tech aisle next to the pharmacy, dude, that is so cool. This may seem to be the most peaceful and positive state to be in, but I assure you, it is by far the most volatile because all it takes is a thin straw to break that reality. This fabricated fantasy never will be real, but there was only one way for me to figure this out. The final symptom. What's this? Oh, it's another Orlando. I think we have everything. Don't worry guys, I'm okay, I'm all right. As you can see, I drank plenty of water and then I rubbed my eye with a golden ring that solved everything. But the point is, is we were so close. The journey was long, but we weren't there yet. And by the next day with less than eight targets remaining, we were only hours away from planting our flag of victory as generational pioneers. No way, dude, is Christian still not awake? Yo, Christian. Yo. <sighs> Time to wake up. You got targets to run to, you ready? With just a little more sleep under my saggy eyelids, Christian had some urgent but very quick business to attend to. So for just a couple locations, my wife was kind enough to pick up his slack. Let's play a little game called you point at a figure and we <laughs> see if we've gotten it before. Light up walkie talkies? Yep. This one? Yep. This one? Yep. This one? Yep. This one? Yep. The nano metallics? Yeah. This one? Absolutely. Did you get that guy? Unfortunately, yes. Oh, Dinobot Sledge? Uh... Yes, that's who we're getting. The first few targets predictably consisted of things that we had seen more than a few times, but it's all totally good because at one of the target locations, we ran across the one and only Bumble Swoop. And I don't know if you know this, but Bumble Swoop is uh, Bumblebee and Swoop. If you just. <laughs> Set a reminder for me to stop collecting Transformers. No. <sighs> You ready to do this? With Christian back in the game, we only had a few locations left before the finale, where we would land in our hometown of Claremont. We absolutely assumed that there wasn't going to be any new toys after the 100 plus targets that we had been to. And oh boy, was I wrong. Okay, pause here. Quick side note. Here in the vlog, I switched the lens of the camera over to manual focus without realizing it. So that just means for you guys that this entire location has at least slightly out of focus footage. When I got home and discovered this full on post production, I did spend the better part of a week contemplating lighting myself on fire and jumping off a bridge. 126 stores in, second to last stop. Statistically, what happened next was a near impossibility. How does it feel to be uh, second to the last one done? This is it, this is the, um, what do you call it? Second to last? Se second to last, that's the one. Same old, same old. If I see the set of Optimus Prime figures and the di <coughs> No way, dude. No way, dude. You're just messing with me. <laughs> There's no way, dude. What? What was I just talking about? Is this the one you wanted? This is like the one I wanted. I, I cannot believe it happened. We searched across the entire state when the whole time the figure I wanted the most sat in one of our hometown locations. With smiles on our faces and a skip in my step, we made our way to the last destination, Claremont, Florida. My family moved to Claremont, Florida when I was 14 years old, and this specific Target store was responsible for so many of my childhood toy hunts, regular meetups with friends, and of course, the first time I introduced Transformers in a video to this channel during its humble origins. So it was only fitting that it would stand as the final stop before we planted our metaphorical flag as world record toy hunters. <sighs> I feel like we need something special to memoriate this, you know? Mm-hmm, found it. <laughs> I think this is a perfect representation of this toy hunt. Messed up, infuriating sometimes, overly priced, expensive. Yellow. But at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. <coughs> All right, you ready? The last side. I'm just feeling myself. I'm just feeling
just feeling myself Just like that, the flag was finally planted. We did it, and that flag came at a cost. It was a long journey, and it was a hard journey. We didn't get much sleep, much rest, or much food. We suffered together, laughed together, and we threatened each other just a couple of times. It wasn't a big deal, don't worry about it. Pass the butter, honey, pass the mayonnaise. Shut up! By the end, we had traveled 2,472 miles, spent nearly 3,000 minutes driving in the car, visited 127 Target stores, recorded over 1,200 gigabytes worth of footage that you're now watching compiled this, this vlog and purchased so many more toys than I could have ever calculated or budgeted for. I still don't understand how the math on that works. It, it blows my mind every single day that I think about it. But despite all of that, while the journey cost us greatly, the true value lies in what we gain from all this. The flu. We both got like super sick after this and Christian even got a nasty little stomach pug with it and you can't put a price on that. Hey Goobers, thank you so much for sticking around and actually watching the whole outrageously long video. This project was, if you couldn't tell, by far the biggest undertaking I've ever accomplished and it wouldn't have been even remotely possible without some incredible people. Like I mentioned, I collaborated with Binary Coco to custom design and build the an incredible glowing store models from scratch. Genuinely the nicest and the coolest people working there and it's literally just a couple of guys who create games. And right now their newest is called Mondrian. It is such a simple concept that makes a brand new game experience every time I play it, especially after getting used to Hasbro's board games getting cheaper in their quality over the years, it is amazing to immediately feel the difference in the quality materials that Binary Coco uses for their original games. Make sure that you check out their website in the description to take a look at the dozens of awesome products that they have. Their games are genuinely amazing and their prices are so reasonable. I'm also super grateful to Bamboo Lab. They sent me their X1 Carbon 3D printer and that contributed a massive part of the supports and production of the miniature store models during filming. Bamboo Lab was so helpful and accommodating even when I had some urgent last minute requests from them. I'm definitely going to talk more about the X1 Carbon in future videos. This is not the last you're seeing of it because this thing is one of the coolest machines that I've had the privilege of working with. Last but not least, I saved the most important person for last, which is Christian. Don't tell him I said this, but he's absolutely my best friend and one of my favorite people in the world. I mess around a lot in the video, but straight up, I couldn't ask for a better friend and I consider him an actual brother. That being said, I don't think he'll make it this far into the video at like the very end of it. So, you know, it'd be funny just to troll him. Go down to the comments and tell him he's a freaking nerd. Just type like Christian is a freaking nerd and <laughs> he'll just think that everyone hates him. We're what six targets in we're rounding about the corner of the Florida Autism Center about to check it out and see what's up and drop Jared off. 